Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Um, today I'm going to have a go at painting a picture with a uh, neutral background and a bird or two on it. I haven't done anything like this for quite a while. Um, these birds are going to be somewhere a little bit more realistic perhaps than um, some of the whimsical ones that we've been doing, but I don't really know how it's going to turn out yet because um, you know how it is, uh, don't you? These days nothing is predictable, is it? So um, I've got what I can predict, which is that I'm going to be using my um, Kiritaki Art Nouveau set. This is rearranged. They don't come in this order and um, I've replaced a couple of the colours like this one <clears throat> with these ones from the main set, from the 48 set. But what I'm planning to use is a background in this kind of neutral sort of creamy shades, maybe with a bit of pink, and um, we'll see how that goes. So uh, the nice thing about these colours is that they are soft and they're quite pastel and um, they've got white in them, <clears throat> I'm sure. Sorry about my throat, a bit hay for you free today. Um, if you don't have the Kiritaki Art Nouveau set, do not worry. All you need to do is just mix some Chinese white paint with your, um, with your um, ordinary colours. So if you, you get a tube of Chinese white, which I'm just trying to rake out here. Um, no, that's paint's grey, that's not the same thing. Well, anyway, you know, a tube of paint like this. Um, I know I've got one here somewhere. I don't see it, but this is a tube of white paint. This one's from um, Teddy in Spain. Um, but you can get tubes of white paint, Chinese white, not titanium white, but Chinese white is meant to make watercolours um, more opaque and pastely. So that's all you actually need to do. So just mix some of that with whatever colours. So for example, um, if you had uh, something like this, which is burnt sienna, and you have got the traditional sort, just mix it with some Chinese white and you'll get a colour a bit like this. And uh, I'll just test that to show you. So, you know, it's a bit more chalky, not exactly chalky, but sort of chalky. Um, so let's make the background first and let's just use some of these light colours. And we've done this before, haven't we? I'm using a round brush, Proline Pro Art, size 10, a large round. And uh, I, I want a light background. I've put washi tape around the outside edge here to um, give me something of a boundary. Doesn't doesn't uh, what doesn't what what doesn't it it doesn't matter if you haven't got any that's right uh, just paint to the edge of the paper if you want so yeah we're just going to slosh in some what looks a bit like dilute coffee doesn't it and this is hot chocolate yes oh you know who I was listening to this morning I was listening to the Unexpected Gypsy. I bet you've all listened to her. She's got 140,000 subscribers. She's from England. Um, she's from the north, I think. I'm from England, but I'm from the south. It's quite different. But she's, whoops, she's interesting. And she was talking about the importance of art in healing the soul. And I uh, can't say I disagree with her on that. Um, yeah, so, uh, her most recent one's quite interesting. You might want to give it a listen. We're all finding life a bit tricky, aren't we, these days? 
Okay, so that's the background. That's the first thing. And then I think I'll probably put some sort of darker, streaky things in, maybe perhaps sort of like a kind of uh, branch. That's the word. Something like a a branch that the birds could sit on. Something like that. And keep it nice and sort of uh, loose. And we have a few splashes of colour down here and then echo it up here a bit. And this is going to run and uh, blend a bit, I think. Perhaps we'll put a bit more of this milk cream. Looks like vanilla, vanilla, that's what it looks like. It looks like vanilla uh, milkshake. Yes. Okay, we'll strengthen up that branch again a bit more. Uh, so it's like a, a Y and we're going to stand the birds on there. And so what I need to do now is just let that dry. Okay, so that's dry now and that's going to be our background. Um, and I've got here a tracing that I just did. I, I drew a couple of birds like this. Well, actually what I did was I drew them separately first. I drew, just so that you know, because you can do this too. On tracing paper, I drew one bird, then I turned it over, I drew it again, and then I put them together and joined them up like that. And then I photocopied it at 80% to make it a bit smaller onto, um, well, first I copied it onto ordinary paper, that size, that 100%. Then I copied that onto tracing paper at 80% because that was too big. So now I've got this and I'm going to put that there on the, on the background and I'm going to actually trace it, um, which I don't normally do, but I thought I would just show you how I would do this. Um, I, when I say I don't normally do it, maybe I do. How often do I do birds like this? Um, no harm in this. This is a Mars Lumograph, very soft pencil. It's an EE, which is very, very soft. And uh, you see how thick the lead is. It's very thick. It comes in a set. I expect you can still get these. This is a very old tin here. I don't suppose they come like this anymore. But inside there, there were four Bs and six Bs and EBs and EEs. And I expect that's probably quite specialised, but I'm sure that's still available. So I've got a nice flat point. It's not a point, it's flat because I've used it before. I'm going to have to sit down now so I can get some level of uh, control over my tracing. And I'm just going to, oh, wait a minute. Uh, was I going to do it that way or was I going to do it that way? I think it looks better that way. I think, okay. I'm going to put it like that. Then I need to put the, um, the uh, you know what, on the other, on this side. So. I nearly got that completely back to front. Ha, ah, da da, whatever. Okay, so we just do that. Just on the bits that we're going to want to copy. And it just, just makes it a little bit easier. And the photocopier and tracing paper are a wonderful asset. Especially if you are making cards to sell and you want to do the same thing again and again. Surprising how much time it will save to be able to do it like this. So then we put that there. Yeah, that'll do something like that. And then we need a hard pencil or harder. Uh, what have I got? What have I got? Oh, here we are. So 2B or not 2B, how about an H? We'll get an H here, nice and hard. I'm going to take this off, I hope it will stay in place. So then I'm just going to go as close 
as I can to the lines. And I'll just check. Yeah, that's visible. little legs here. We can draw those afterwards, really. What have I got? Yep, what have I got? Um, yes, that's probably what I need. Just need the main outline, really. Okay, so there's his other leg. I think that went wrong. I think that should have been right around there. And then his foot is here. Leg is here. Eye. And then being as it's a chickadee, they have a kind of black cap, don't they? Right, that's good. Okay, so I've given them now a little uh, branch to stand on. And I think the next thing to do is to go down size in brush. I'll go down to a size seven here, round. And I think I'll just um, I'll keep the sort of chickadee theme going here, so we'll do do them with the very simple markings that uh, chickadees have, don't they, with their little black caps. And uh, I have a photo of one here somewhere, yes, so, so they have a, a kind of... You do need to use... There's nothing wrong with using a photograph for reference. You can't be expected to remember what everything looks like, can you? So their, their beaks are kind of greyer and their head is kind of black. But, uh, you know, this is not an ornithological, uh, that's a long word, isn't it? An ornithological uh, painting. In other words, it's not meant to be completely accurate or even remotely accurate, actually. This paper, I should have mentioned, is the Canson XL... Uh, mixed media, large, that is to say, A4 size uh, sketchbook. And um, I like this paper. It seems to suit the way I paint. Um, better than regular watercolour paper, although it's obviously meant for watercolour as well as mixed media, whatever that's supposed to mean. It's very sturdy, has quite a lot of texture, but it doesn't seem to impose itself too badly on, on anything. So then we need some uh, sort of, uh, a, a, a sort of lilac -y back, I think. That is very, very intense color. I don't want anything like as dark as that, but I could take a black, mix it with a little bit of lilac and then we'll just come down here the lilac goes well contrast good uh what's the word um complementary color to the uh creamy color of the background and i'm not trying to control this too much i just want it to be loose and easy. I might, it depends how this goes. I might do, I think that line was right actually, the first one or more or less. So we'll go back to that. Um, I might, might do some line work with a pen, just depends. Depends how it goes, and then 
So we want the same thing down here. And remember, as I said, this is not ornithologically, that is to say, birdly. Correct, I know, this is probably the colour. I've never, actually, never seen one of these birds in real life, although I have looked at photos. So here we are, and then it needs a beak. We uh, saw, oh, I didn't see it, Tamsin saw it, and she said to me, oh, look, there's a woodpecker in the garden. I don't think I've... I don't know that I've ever seen a woodpecker in our garden before. Still haven't. <laughs> so then um, I want, I think, to put in lightly the twig. I'll probably use a pen. I might use a pen on their feet. And we're going to do some, some leaves. As well, in a minute, and maybe, maybe something floral. Oh, I missed a bit. I think I might um, dry that, be on the safe side, I don't want to smudge anything. So I think I might add a few uh, bits of twig to add something to the background a little bit. There's, there's a lot of different ways that you could go from here. You, you know, it's up to you, of course, how you wish to um, develop. If you want to develop the painting, uh, you could just, I don't like that, as parallel lines. Uh, maybe this should come out here a little bit, perhaps. And, uh, yeah. It's, it's tricky, I'm not quite sure, ever, never quite sure. So don't be afraid to use the eraser. That's not a problem not about what you've done. But I think that one over here could definitely go in. That looks okay. Um, I, do, I do think I, I need something here. And I don't want it to be a straight line. But what I could do, because I can't decide, is I could put the leaves in first. And uh, we could, I know it's spring and the oak leaves haven't even come out yet. But you know, our oak trees here have still got leaves on them. It's quite strange. And even though it's uh, April, they should have all gone by now. But there's still uh, uh, quite a few, so I think I might put some oak leaves scattered around here. What do you think? Sort of shriveled up and pale. The other way to go would be to do it in spring colours. And, um, you know, perhaps the background you do it in blues instead of um, this a neutral colour that I've picked. I must be feeling neutral today. Just, just sort of, you know, they don't have to be anything terribly accurate. And then um, we can put a little bit of 
paint on there. Let's warm them up a little bit with some burnt sienna. Be too dark, do we? Keep them all roughly the same. I know some people have been having trouble, especially in Canada, getting hold of the Kuritaki paints. I'm sure they'll come through soon. They, they must. The Art Nouveau set has been particularly hard to track down. But I'm sure that, you know, it's just as a little bit of supply uh, problems, isn't it? I'm sure it'll turn up eventually. Did in England anyway, in the end. I can't remember now, did I get mine in France? Or did I get it from England? I think I got it from France. No, yes, yes I did, yes I did, definitely. So if they've got it here, huh. Everyone ought to have it. So I'm just putting a little bit of this uh, burnt sienna on these twigs. I've actually ordered another set of the Kuretake 48, uh, 48 set. Well, not the, not the Art Nouveau. I haven't ordered 48, I've ordered 36. Um, because, just in case they go out of stock, because I'm getting a bit low on some of my colours. And as I've said so many times before, what I like most of all about these paints is that they dry the same colour as they are when they're wet, which is a really big plus. I never did get the hang of painting things darker than I wanted them to end up. Never, never did get the hang of that. And now I don't have to. I've just put the little bird's eyes in, in with black, and if the light disappears from their eyes, I will, um, uh, you know, um, do it with a pen, a white pen. And the legs, I've got a ready-made grey in the 48 set, so I'll use that for the legs and the feet. And then once they're painted, I'll probably use pen to sharpen up some of the edges, probably, almost for sure. And we can use the, the lighter grey to give ourselves some, maybe I need even white there, perhaps. But I haven't got any handy, so we just use grey. Okay, um, so now the pen, uh, 0.5 black, too thick. Let's go for something thinner, um, 
So we're just keeping it really light. And this is, this is not rocket science. I'm just basically going over the lines that I did before in pencil and sketchy lines. I'm not, not one of those people that likes to do uh, lots of solid lines with Sharpies and things. That's not my style, but you could if you wanted to. That's also permissible. I think it's probably best just to go with whatever comes naturally to you. It's all about your own personality and, and what your body wants to, to do. Trying to think if there's anything interesting I should be saying. I could be, couldn't I? Um, if anyone's inter interesting, yes, uh, interested in um, the paintings, we're still selling the paintings uh, from the videos. We, we just were informed by the powers that be that we've um, we've now created 700 videos and shorts over the last uh, two and a half years. Is it since we started to do this? So there are 700, they're not all long form videos, most of them are though. Um, so there's plenty to choose from if you want to, if you still want to buy one, although we've sold quite a lot, there's still quite a lot left. And uh, 50, uh, I'm just asking $50 really to, to cover the cost of um, posting it to you and packing it and everything. And they all come with a complimentary and painted surprise bookmark gift, as well as the painting. The bookmarks, sometimes you'll recognize it as being one that was painted in one of the videos as well, which is kind of fun. Or it might be a special one that I painted just for you. And if you are interested, just pick whatever one you fancy and uh, send me an email at um, studio at dianeanton.com. And uh, if you can give me at least two or three to choose from in case the one that you pick is already sold. For example, the, the painting of the chickadees with the oaks, that's, that's long gone. And... Um, but there are still a lot to choose from, so just just let me know exactly, you know, find the, the name of it and let me know what the name is because there are 700 of them. <laughs> send, so send me an email and then for payment, what we do is we send you a PayPal funds request. And um, that's really easy to pay, just you don't need a PayPal account, you just pay with a credit card or a debit card if you haven't got a PayPal account. But if you have, you can do it that way too. Okay, well, I think I'm getting towards the end of this. As usual, it's not turned out at all the way I had intended, but that's the way these things are. And uh, I quite like it, actually. I'm not unhappy. This design, you could use it for a greetings card or something like that. I think it'd be quite nice. And I did, um, and I did one earlier, um, not quite like this, but similar. And um, so I did this in this. This is this is a Strathmore card. Strathmore, it is Strathmore, isn't it? The ones that you get in a box with envelopes. And on the inside, I painted another little bird just on the inside there, which I thought. Uh, sort of adds interest to when you open 
open it up. So this is one of my practices that I did this morning. Right, and there's another one there. And, and on this one, um, I just did circles. That was where I started this morning uh, with this idea. He went a bit wrong, but uh, you can see what we're up to there. So I painted the circles in the background. And then the next one I did was this one. And then I decided to go for an all over pattern. And we ended up with this one. So let's uh, take the tape off just because that's, that's the fun part of it. This washi tape does not stick, thank goodness. It doesn't take the paper off. I mean, when it doesn't stick, I mean, it sticks while it should. And then usually, let's go. When you um, pull it off, keep it at right angles like that, you see. And then generally speaking, it uh, lets go more easily than if you just pull it this way. That was a tip someone showed me one time. And I think it's true to say that that can be relied on, more or less. Um, where's the end? We go from the top down. So there we are, that's that. Um, it could probably do with a little bit of more um, line work here. A little bit more uh, shadow and so on and so forth. Give it a bit more shape. But I don't want to keep you uh, hanging around. Maybe it's breakfast time where you are. Just do some more shadow with the pen if you want, or you could come in with the with the watercolor again. All right then, that'll do for now. I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you again soon. So I'll say bye bye for now, everybody. Bye bye.